Welcome to Strip Cover Lit, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of literature. I am Adrian Ford, and we are here for a video in the Poetry Discussion Playlist, the second video of National Poetry Month 2023, and it's going to be a bit of a different video. So the editing software that I'm currently doing this on does not allow multi-hour level or multi-hour long discussions. It is simply 30 minutes so I cannot do what I was doing last year. I was hoping to do something like that, but I do not have the uh, ability in the confines of time. Instead, what I'm going to be doing today is talking about the idea of poetry itself. What is poetry? Now, if you enjoy discussions like this, discussions like this are basically all I do on my personal channel, a link to which can be found in the description below. I'm creeping up on a thousand subscribers. It would really make my day if you help me get there. Um, but what is poetry? Now, I did a series on this channel, I believe it, it was three or four years ago, by that very name, What is Poetry? It was over a book by John Hall Wheelock. All of those videos are still up. And the book itself, I think, was useful to the extent that something like that should be useful, but it was ultimately sub-satisfactory. And I think, spoiler alert, this discussion too will be sub-satisfactory, because I think that there is something uh, ephemeral about a question such as this. Now, this is a more specific question than the question I'm about to talk about, but it's on the same type of level. Years ago, when I was in grad school getting a creative writing master's degree, most of my day, I was working three 10-hour shifts in retail, uh, leaving at 12 th midnight, basically. And so I had the morning hours to myself, and I had I was working three tens. So I had four days of no work. One day of class was how this master's program was set up. And I started thinking about the idea of art. What is art? And the fact that there I was in a master's program, and I could not put together a satisfactory definition for what I thought art might be, it really bothered me. So I sort of went, to, what was it at the time? I think it was Facebook at the time. I don't have a Facebook anymore. But I went on there and just posed the question. Now, I had an extremely extremely pretentious friend at the time. Don't have her as a friend anymore. She was a professor, and all she would use Facebook for was talking crap on her students, talking about how dumb her students were. Well, I'm sorry, but that is your job to make them not dumb. So, not my friend anymore. But um, I posed the question, what is art? And you know, these sort of uh, presumably intellectual types. And there's going to be a whole lot of irony here when we get to the end of this video. These sort of pretentious, presumably intellectual types really, really hate definitions. And they really, really hate definitions when it's a definition about something they are supposed to be doing What is when it is their responsibility, if it were. She was, uh, in addition to a professor, a poet. That is what she called herself. That is how she referred to herself, was as a poet. And when I pose this... Now, when I say pretentious, presumably intellectual type, I mean all of the stereotypes you're thinking about. So, yeah, uh, English professor at the college level. I believe she only had, at that time, uh, freshman-level introductory courses. At least those are the ones she complained about so much, which, you know, get bent. And um, always wore black, only black, all black. Black that was too loose and flowy and uh, thick frame glasses and just smarter than you, much 
smarter than you, much, much smarter than you, right? That type of person that didn't like sports, hated sports, hated the city in which she lived. There was always some place better. There was always some place more artistic. There was always some place that would be uh, more accepting of her, but she never moved there for some unbeknownst to anyone reason. That type hated, you know, everything that was popular, hated sports. Kansas City, fairly big sports town. Professional football, professional baseball, those are the big leagues in the United States. Basketball is third. Used to have a basketball team. Big sports town. Hated everything to do with it. So when I post this as a – what were they called? Status? Is it a status, I think, on, on Facebook? Um, posted this. What is art? Just open question on the Facebook machine. She chimes in. Of course, with a loosey-goosey type definition, well, I believe that art is anything that can elicit emotion. So me, being me, the Kansas City Chiefs at the time had a running back named Jamal Charles. I said, oh, well, that's really cool, because Jamal Charles is the most exciting player in the National Football League, and I think... Him running the football is art. Do you agree with that? No, she did not. So what I'm getting at here is there is always a, um, there's always a bit of a cantankerous relationship with something like art and a definition. Now, it is my belief that for something to be art, is to not is to be creative but not propaganda that is to say propaganda has its users end state in mind advertising is propaganda all advertisements can be aesthetically pleasing can look nice can sound good they uh, can have decent writing behind them, good writing behind them, compelling writing behind them. But the end goal of that piece of creativity is that you want to try ghost energy drink. That's what it is. Art is not that. What art is, is a creative piece where the consumers end state is ambiguous. So this is to say, art is to be interpreted, right? If I have an end goal in mind for you, that is not art, that is propaganda. What is poetry then? Poetry is a subset of art. In that book by John Hall Wheelock, I didn't feel there was ever a properly sort of um, concrete handle on poetry as a thing. So I went to, I'm a very big fan of haiku. I have this book here. You can't see it. It's called The Japanese Haiku. It's Essential Nature, History, and Possibilities in English with Selected Examples by Kenneth Yasuda. So, I was, so if poetry is a subset of art, haiku is a subset of poetry. So I thought, well, let's go to this book and find a useful definition of haiku, which might tell us about poetry, which may inform or be informed by our understanding, if you agree with me, of art. So here's what we get from the very opening spiel in haiku. A definition of the term haiku, which will, which will cover not only its formal characteristics, but also embo embodies something of its breathing beauty and its elusive life, is a difficulty which probably faces the definers of any art form. An additional hurdle in the case of haiku is the tendency of critics in the past to dismiss it as inconsequential for a variety of reasons which seem to have no relationship to its function and no appreciation of its accomplishments. 
We are not, however, so rich in its beauty or tranquility or joy to be able to discard any creation so directly concerned with these qualities as haiku, concerning which Basho noted from ancient pardon me from ancient times those with a feeling for refinement find joy in knowing the truth and insight of things. For as the haiku is a major poetic form in Japan, I feel that it can become so in other countries, given some understanding of its nature and its aesthetics and its sort of power, a power which is similar in some respects to that of painting. I shall begin then by comparing haiku to painting. Did you catch it? Are you with me? And there you have it. A book about haiku beginning with a wonderful abdication of responsibility. Now, maybe I'm just being persnickety. Maybe it is not the goal or responsibility of the author in question to tell us what poetry is, to tell us what even haiku is. Maybe that is not the case. I would disagree. I would say that if you're writing a book called The Japanese Haiku, you have a responsibility to tell us what it is. Now, this book explores a lot of things. If we just take a look at the um, table of contents, an approach to haiku, basic principles, aesthetic attitude, aesthetic experience, haiku moment, haiku nature, form and content, haiku experience and length, three elements, when, where, what, relationship to the three elements, the five, seven, five. Now, this book is, before we get to the examples of haikus, 181 pages of essentially size 6 font. So, we're, I think one of the, um, so this is an academic pursuit, this book, presumably. Oftentimes, in academic pursuits, Everyone is reduced, so in the creative world, in the creative writing world, the Hemingway uh, sort of way, the Heming way sort of comes up and it's the iceberg theory. You, you only tell the, the elements that are necessary to the story, very much like haiku, very much born out of an experience, his experience, Hemingway's experience, uh, with Ezra Pound, Ezra Pound very influenced by haiku. Now, uh, ironically, unfortunately, the... Uh, tendency in academia is instead to say as little in as many words as possible, as opposed to as much in as few words as possible. Therefore, the wonderful conundrum of an academic book about haiku is that you are explaining in all of these words what haiku tries to do in so few. Now, maybe, maybe I'm the arsehole here, right? Maybe I'm the idiot. Maybe I'm the jerk. Okay. I'm willing to accept that. In fact, Kenneth Yasuda goes so far as to tell me so. On page 179, the usual difficulty with intellectualism of the Western poet in his poetry is that it thereby ceases to be poetry. Hmm. Yes. How very ironic. Yes. Oh, yes. Now, slap you in the face with this while he opens the book with this academic jargon of a paragraph. So, uh, that will be what it is. And that's very cute. That's very cute to go ahead and, and write a book about the essential nature, history, and possibilities of haiku in English. That's the subtitle. English, a Western language. And then, go ahead and turkey slap the Western poet. Well, okay. I don't have to reclaim it in the Western tongue. Well, the Western tongue, yes, I do, but not the Western spirit. 
I will go to another Eastern source for something a little bit more precise. The Art of War from Sun Tzu. Sun Tzu says in the chapter on maneuvering, part 36, when you surround an army, leave an outlet free. This goes back to my definition of um, art in general. You have, with an artistic piece, surrounded the enemy. You have explained something so wholly and so fully as to surround the enemy. You leave him an outlet which is the escape of his own interpretation. This is something we very much lost in today's world. It's something we very much lost in today's world by claiming a writer is an ist, a sexist, a racist, an etc. ist because of the art he or she puts on the paper. It is not the responsibility of the artist to interpret for the reader. It is the responsibility of the artist to present something. Now, one way that I have often, very often explained poetry in a literary sense is through track terms. If, if a novel is the two-mile run, then a short story is the 400-meter dash, leaving for the poets the 100-meter dash. Now, I argue that... So, when you're talking about something like conflict, conflict, no matter how long it actually lasts, always feels like a sprint. Therefore, if we're comparing literature to combat, it is always the poem which will be most... the, the the poem will always most embody an act of war, an act of war on the senses, an act of war on the sensibilities. Jane Austen herself would be very proud. Now, why do I say this? What good does it do? First off, it's a very simple way for me to weasel out of having to give a definition of poetry. But also, if you're going to look to anyone for what it is that literature is, what it is that literature does, what it is, how it is that literature is to be defined, perhaps, instead of the academics, we go to the individuals who have done, not taught, but done, we go to individuals who have, whose writing has stood the tests of time, Sun Tzu, um, for, for neater definitions of what poetry is. Now, we could, I, could, I could have plucked a quote from any part of the art of war. We'll go, I opened up 123, energy. Here is energy, the art of war, part 14. Therefore, a good fighter will be terrible in his onset and prompt in his decision. We've all read bad poetry, haven't we? A bad poet is terrible in his onset. He doesn't start the poem in the right place. And prompt in his decision. Doesn't start the poem in the right place and ends up telling you what the poem means. Not allowing your interpre you your interpretation. Instead, attempts to make it um, a an act of... Uh, Sorry, I didn't sleep last night. I'm going. I, I, I've been up for over 24 hours now. So uh, it is an act of desecration of, of what of what art is, but it is instead propaganda. That's where I was going. Um, so as ironic as it has to be, and, and the best art I think is always with some hint of irony. Here is a video on. What is poetry? Titled, What is Poetry? The thumbnail, What is Poetry? Railing against, railing against individuals who consider themselves academic, but refuse to actually give a definition of what it is that they're defining. And I'm going to refuse to define poetry. 
as in, I will just say, this is an ongoing exploration for myself, to be sure. But I think for anyone who considers themselves a poet or a um, consumer of poetry, if you have a better definition, by all means, let me know in the comments below. But I think that I think that the art of war is as good a starting place for the discussion of poetry as anything. That is all I have for this poetry discussion, the 150th, in this poetry discussion playlist. Uh, this is National Poetry Month, wherein on Sundays, normally after this Sunday, we will be discussing Sylvia Plath poems. On Monday, we will talk, be talking about William Blake. Tuesday will bring us Edgar Allan Poe. Wednesday will be William Shakespeare. I'm going to be starting with Sonnet 1 and going from there. Thursday will be Dickinson Darkly, a series going poem by poem, journeying poem by poem through Emily Dickinson's entire catalog. Fridays will be with Will with with William with Frost. Fridays with Frost. And um Saturdays will be slumming Saturdays with Bukowski. That is all I have for this poetry discussion. I will be back tomorrow with another, and I hope to have you for the rest of them as well.